both bones commonly caused by a twisting force which causes a spiral fracture in both bones in different levels or direct trauma or a blow to the uh, forearm lead to transverse fracture at the same level. Additional radiation which may lead to more displacement can be caused by a pronator muscle. We have a pronator teres and the pronator quadratus in the middle and in the lower third and the supinator muscle that is by biceps and supinator muscle in the upper third of the forearm. All these muscles act to displace of the fracture if complete a fracture happened. Clinically, the patient usually presented also for, or by history of a trauma with complaining from pain, swelling, and local tenderness. Displaced fracture is, 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 is usually a quite obvious deformity is appeared. We should check the nerve and arteries uh, that means distal pulsation. This is the fracture site to exclude any vascular or nerve injury and also to exclude compartment syndrome that may occur in such an injury. This patient presented with history of trauma and swelling deformity of the forearm. We must take an X-ray. X-ray view, we show AP and lateral, show there is a fracture with complete displacement of the fracture, both bone radius and ulna. Again, this is another level of fracture radius and ulna. Sometimes the fracture radius and ulna associated with other injury, like interarticular fracture of the distal part of radius or elbow dislocation, or even fracture humerus. Treatment of a fracture radius and ulna. In children, even in displaced fracture, a cross reduction is usually successful because of the thick periosteum that will guide the fracture and control the fracture bone displacement. After reduction in children, we put a bag slab above elbow with the elbow flex to 90 degree and ask patient to elevation and using the fingers. After 10 days, we change the bag slab to POP or complete cast. If the fracture is the upper lip, it is very important. If the fracture in the upper limb, we put the forearm in supination to counteract the supinator muscle action. If the fracture in the middle third, we put the forearm in a neutral position. While in the, if the fracture in the distal third, we put the forearm in a pronation position. It is very important the site or the level of the fracture and the position of the forearm in the cast. So again, in the upper third, the forearm put in supination position. In the middle third, we put the forearm in intrusive position in the bag stub or in the POP. And if the fracture in the distal, we put the forearm in a pronation position. Never forget the physiotherapy for the injured limb. In under the unstable fracture in children, a close reduction and percutaneous elastic or flexible wire can be of a great helpful to hold and immobilize the fracture. Open reduction is indicated if the fracture cannot be reduced in later presentation after two weeks. That means they start callus formation. So it is very difficult to reduce the fracture and fixate it without open reduction. The fixation now happen by a plate and screws or by intramedullary K wire or elastic nail. This is an example of a beautiful operation fixated by a plate and screw to hold the fracture radius and ulna. And also, this is again a picture of intramedullary K wire to hold the fracture radius and ulna. Intramedullary Krishna wire. A close reduction under a fluoroscope and using what we call elastic nail, it is of, well, of a great helpful nowadays. In adults, a close reduction of this fracture is very difficult and redisplacement in the cast is common. So most of the surgeons prefer to open reduction and fixation for, from the beginning by plate and screws or rarely by intramedullary nail. Now we regard the fracture radius and ulna as an intraarticular fracture because the forearm 
is a joint. Regard some folks regard it as a joint because of the rotation of the radius on the ulna. So in adult, it is an indication for open reduction because usually the fracture is unstable, and also we regard this type of fracture as or similar to intraarticular fracture. And also early mobilization and regain of function of the forearm is very mandatory and important. Open fracture also we classify it according to Castillo classification and sometimes external or sometimes internal fixation by intramedullary nail or plastic nail. Complications of fracture radius and under. first of all nerve injury it is fortunately rarely to occur but can be caused by a surgeon for example posterior interosseous nerve especially if the fracture happened in the proximal part of the radius there's possibility of posterior interosseous nerve injury vascular injury ulnar and radial artery sometimes as, uh, accompanied by this fracture compartment syndrome is very important Complication after this fracture. Late complication, delayed union, non union, and man union, also stiffness of the elbow and wrist joint. Single bone fracture of the forearm. It is much less common than fracture of both bones. Its important are when one bone of fracture along its shaft. It usually associated with dislocation of the proximal or distal radio ulnar joint. So when there is one bone of fracture, X-ray should be taken to the whole of the limb and also involve the joint above and joint below to exclude any associated injury. The second importance of this fracture is the non-union. Non-union is liable to occur due to intact pillow bone. The treatment of single bone of fracture usually need open reduction and fixation as you see here this is a fracture in the ulna isolated the fracture in the ulna bone it is called night stick injury and also this is an isolated fracture of radius that usually need open reduction and fixation montage of fracture dislocation again it is a fracture of the proximal third of ulna with dislocation or subluxation of a proximal radio ulnar joint and or radio capitellar joint. The clinically, in displaced fracture, the ulnar deformity is usually obvious, but the dislocated head of radius is masked by swelling. X-ray, in isolated fracture ulna, it is essential to take a true AP and lateral view of the elbow joint. The normal radial head is usually pointing towards the capitellum in Montagia fracture. It is not. In addition, the appearance of the fracture in the proximal ulna. This X-ray is very nice and typical for what we call Montagia fracture. Again, it is a fracture in the proximal part of ulna with dislocation of a proximal radio ulnar joint. Also. This is a two example of fracture montagia. This is in a mature skeleton and here in immature skeleton. You see the fracture in the proximal third of ulna with complete dislocation of a proximal radio ulna joint and radio capitellar joint. So here we have a fracture in the proximal ulna with dislocation of a proximal radio ulna and radio capitellar joint. Also here, it is also typical fracture of a proximal ulna with dislocation of a proximal radio ulnar and radio capitellar joint. Treatment for Montagia fracture. The most important point in a treatment is to restore the length of the fracture ulna. And only in this case, the dislocation will be reduced again to its place. So in adult, this means open reduction and fixation by plate and screws. If the dislocation not reduced, if the dislocation of the radial head not reduced back to its place, then again, through a separate incision, we do open reduction for the head of radius and reduce it back to its place. In children, if the fracture is a green stick, then manipulation under anesthesia can be of great helpful. 
But if the fracture is complete and is still displaced after close reduction, then again, open reduction and fixation like in adults. As you see here, after Montagia fracture, open reduction and fixation by plate and screws for regaining the, head, the length of the ulna and usually the radial head regain back to its place after regaining the length of the ulna. Complication of Montagia fracture. First of all, nerve injury, which occur either due to manipulation or during surgery. Malunion, unless the fracture has been perfectly reduced, the radial head remain dislocated and limiting the elbow movement. If it is occur in adult, then excision of head of radius sometimes indicated. Non-union of the ulna, the treatment by a rigid internal fixation, sometimes added by bony graft. Galeazi fracture dislocation. It is caused by a fall on the hand. This fracture in the lower third of radius with dislocation of distal radio ulnar joint. It is more common than Montagia. A prominence of te and tenderness over the lower end of the ulna is an important point in examination. It may be possible to, do, to demonstrate that instability of distal radio ulnar joint by balloting the distal end of the ulna, which is called piano key sign, due to dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint. Again, this is a typical picture of Galeazzi fracture, that transverse fracture in the distal third, not distal part, it is in the distal third, with dislocation of distal radio ulnar joint. Treatment. The same as Montagia, the most important point is to restore the length of the fracture radius. Otherwise, the dislocation will not reduce. So in children, it is possible done by close reduction. And if you fail, then open reduction. But in adult, we go ahead directly to open reduction and internal fixation by plate and screws. I think it, we will stop today till the fracture in the distal part of radius, and we will continue the, the next lecture, fracture distal radius and a fracture of the wrist joint and also the fracture of the fingers. Any question regarding the fracture radius and ulna, Montagia or Galeazzi fracture, I will be ready.